A brief overview of Deutero-Isaiah, chapters 51 and 52 through verse 12, in August of 2023. Learning objectives for this session include the following. To outline the passage. To identify recipients of its messages. To identify Rahab the sea monster to find reasons for hope, and to trust in Yahweh's purposes. 51, 1-11, for our purposes, Yahweh's messages to the righteous, to the land of Judah, to the people, to the just, and the people's reply to Yahweh. Yahweh's message to the righteous. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek Yahweh. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. That is, gave him a great posterity. The metaphors of rock and quarry, of course, relate to Abraham and Sarah. Yahweh's message about Zion. For Yahweh will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness as Eden. Her desert as the garden of Yahweh. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving, and the voice of song. Who or what is Zion? Zion is the city of Jerusalem, Yahweh's chosen dwelling place. When he is present, it is Zion. When he is absent, it is only Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the ancient city of Salem. Jer, meaning city, Jerusalem, meaning the city of Salem. A light to the nations, Yahweh's message to the people. Listen to me, my people. A teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. My arms will rule the peoples, for my arm they hope. My salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. The phrase, or my people, my nation, is supported by the Masoretic text, two Dead Sea Scrolls, the Latin Vulgate, the Aramaic Targums, and several Greek versions. The Septuagint, however, reads, my people and kings. The Syriac, in the plurals, peoples and nations. Yahweh's message to the people. Compared with chapter 2, all nations shall gaze on it with joy. Chapter 51, for the light of the peoples. 2, 3, peoples. 51, 4, my people and peoples. 2.3. For teaching shall come forth from Zion. 51.4. For teaching shall go forth from me. 2.4. Thus he will judge amongst nations. 51.4. My way for the light of peoples. And in verse 5. Shall judge the peoples. Thus the messages of 1st Isaiah and 2nd Isaiah overlap in many ways. What do you see in this ancient Sumerian tablet from the 3rd millennium BCE? How many heads does the beast have? What are the wavy lines shown behind it? Who is bravely taking a stand before this beast? The people's response to Yahweh. Wake, 
Awake, put on strength, O arm of Yahweh. Awake, as in the days of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the dragon? Was it not you who dried up the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to cross over? Rahab relates to an ancient Mesopotamian myth regarding monsters in a chaotic sea, here applied to the country of Egypt, from whence the people had been brought out across the Reed Sea. Here you see a portion of ancient cuneiform writing containing the Baal cycle, the story of the god Baal. The name Rahab occurs only in the Bible and is an alternate name for the monster Leviathan, Lotan in cognate languages. Leviathan is a twisting serpent. In Psalm 87, an, a metaphor for Egypt. In the Ugaritic Baal cycle, we read this line, When you killed Litan, the fleeing, twisty serpent, the potentate with seven heads, hence the seven-headed monster. Where else in Scripture do we meet a seven-headed monster? In the book of Revelation. The name, Rechab, comes from a root that says, which seems to mean rage, violence, or surge. In that cycle, we also learn that Baal became the prominent god by defeating the god Yam, which means the sea or ocean in Hebrew. Yahweh's message to the righteous. Listen to me. You who know righteousness, who have my teaching in your heart, do not fear the reproach of others when they revile you. For the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my deliverance will be forever, and my salvation to all generations. The structure of 51.9 through 52.12 can be analyzed in this manner. More messages from Yahweh to the captives, to Jerusalem, to the wounded, to his holy city, to the oppressed, and to his priests. Yahweh's message to the captives. The oppressed shall speedily be released. They shall not die and go down to the pit, nor shall they lack bread. For I am Yahweh your God, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. Yahweh of hosts is his name. I have put my words in your mouth, stretching out the heavens. Yahweh, of course, is reminding the people of his great power and his ability to remove them from Babylon and to lead them back to their homeland in Judea. In 51.16, we have the phrase, stretching out the heavens. Stretching, nata, out of the heavens is supported by the Syriac version, assimilating to Isaiah 51.13. The Masoretic text, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Greek Septuagint version, and other versions actually read planting the heavens, natath, which, however, is difficult to translate. And so a possible translation could be to fix the heavens in place, following the New English Bible. Yahweh's message to Jerusalem. Stand up, O Jerusalem, you who have drunk at the hand of Yahweh, the cup of his wrath. These two things have befallen you. 
who will grieve with you? Devastation and destruction, famine and sword, who will comfort you? Notice the two things consist of pairs, devastation and destruction being one thing against the city, famine and sword against the population. In verse 19, who will comfort you is supported by a Dead Sea Scroll. The Masoretic Hebrew text actually reads, Who? Should I comfort you? The Aramaic Targum reads, None will comfort you but I. And the Septuagint and several other versions, Who will comfort him? A masculine pronoun. The parallel phrase, Who can console you? suggests, Adopt the Dead Sea Scroll reading, Who will comfort you? Yahweh's message to the wounded. Therefore hear this, you who are wounded, who are drunk but not with wine. See, I have taken from your hand the cup of staggering. You shall drink no more from the cup of my wrath, and I will put it into the hand of your tormentors. Yes, it was Yahweh who had caused the people to stumble. Yahweh's message to the holy city. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall enter you no more. We await the fulfillment of this text. Shake yourself from the dust. Rise up, O captive Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. We recall that the name Zion is used of the city of Jerusalem when Yahweh is present in her. In verse 2, to rise up, The Masoretic Hebrew text reads, Sit, implying, take your place on your throne. A Dead Sea Scroll, however, says, And sit on your throne. Another Dead Sea Scroll reads, Return, that is, to your throne. And also in verse 2, Loose the bonds. The Masoretic text has two words. The word that is written in the text and an alternate word written in the margin, which is to be read. The written word reads, The bonds are lucid, also supported by a Dead Sea Scroll and an Aramaic Targum. Whereas the the word that is to be read aloud in the synagogue is, Loose the bonds supported by another Dead Sea Scroll, the Greek Septuagint, and several versions. Notice that loose has a parallel imperative. So we go with the kere, the version to be read. Yahweh's message to the oppressed. What am I doing here, says Yahweh? seeing that my people are taken away without cause. Their rulers howl, says Yahweh, and continually, all day long, my name is despised. By whom? Therefore my people shall know my name. On that day they shall know that it is I who speak. It is I. In Hebrew idiom, to know one's name is to know him. Their rulers howl. Masoretic texts, some Greek versions, the Syriac, the Targums read, its evil rulers howl. Whereas the Septuagint and possibly the Vulgate read, its own rulers weep. In the first case, it's the evil who are howling. Their insults In the second, it is the Israelite leaders weeping. In any event, 
the priests will return to the city, bringing with them the temple instruments that had been taken captive, and they will once again sing joyously to Yahweh. Yahweh's message to his priests, then, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace. A primary function of priests was to teach and to announce peace. Depart, depart, go out from there. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of Yahweh. For Yahweh will go before you, the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Just as Yahweh had led the people out of Egypt and then had come behind them to protect them from pursuing armies, likewise those leaving Babylon for Judea, carrying the instruments of temple worship, would have the Lord go before them, the God of Israel, their rear guard.